700,000 tons. That's approximately how much waste Trinidad and Tobago produces every year, working out to about 2,000 tons per day. To put that daily average into perspective, that's equivalent to the weight of about 19 blue whales. 95% of all the country's waste is disposed of at Swim Call's three Trinidad-based landfills, Beetham, Guanapo, and Forest Park. The company's fourth landfill, Studley Park, is located in Tobago. According to the ninth report of the Joint Select Committee on Swim Call, of the four, the Beetham and Guanapo landfills should be closed. Six years later on, they remain open. So the country doesn't have, uh, you know, well-designed sanitary and engineered landfills. Uh, there are plans afoot to uh, expand um, the Forest Park landfill, to have it um, be designed into a, a well-engineered landfill. So we know that most of these landfills are, are near to their end of life in terms of capacity-wise. So uh, but uh, certainly we need to address um, how, we, how we manage and close off those landfills. We need to develop a brand new sanitary landfill, engineered site with liners, with leachate collection and treatment systems, with uh, gas venting, with air quality and um, water quality monitoring on an ongoing basis, and that needs to be set up. Um, and that, that in itself is, you know, a tremendous investment. Despite repeated acknowledgement from both Swimcall and the EMA, the timeline for making Forest Park the main landfill, with the others acting as transfer stations, is still at best five years away, this according to Rajkumar's estimates. The 2013 report even stated that, quote, although Swimcall made attempts to raise the importance of waste management, it has remained a low priority for central government, end quote. Because we have we have been storing waste in, in these sites for um, 50, 60 years in, in, in the case of Bitham and, and Guanapo. Um, it's not just a question of closing the gates one day and say the landfill is closed. We have to remediate those sites and, and ensure that the waste that is being that will decomp decompose over the next 100 years um, does not present any challenges to the environment and, and ill effects to, to, to humans and, and public health and so on. One of the GSE's recommendations in 2013 indicated that, quote, the monitoring of ground and surface water should be conducted annually in collaboration with the Water Resources Agency at all landfills. This should encompass testing for runoff water at landfills in order to prevent contamination of water reserves, end quote. This too failed to materialize. As part of proper landfill management, there, there is a requirement to have um, environmental monitoring, monitoring of uh, groundwater, of surface water, and, and of air quality. Um, unfortunately, because of lack of funding, we have not uh, been doing active uh, environmental monitoring. At the end of the day, we can only do as much as our funds allow us to do. We have lobbied time and time again, and we have shown that to operate the landfill sites in Trinidad and Tobago require a minimum of $100, $120 million. On April 1st, Swim Call's chairman, Ronald Roach, resigned, citing frustrations with a lengthy list of challenges. A lack of adequate funding for landfill activities, inherited corrupt practices, gang activity, unauthorized salvaging at landfill sites, inadequate health and safety systems, inability to attract the best talent due to perceived security threats at sites, insufficient cash flow for timely payments to suppliers, as well as continued fears of political interference. Swimcall is now searching for a new CEO. Join me next time as we take you inside the Beetham landfill. Absolutely. Welcome to Alcatraz. Joshua Sinongal, TV6 News.
Did you know that 50 to 65% of the country's waste is deposited here at the Bethum, on just 61 hectares of land in Port of Spain? Open for more than 50 years, its current capacity has been referred to by swim call as almost full. The recommendation that it should be closed has been repeated in recent years by government agencies, but it remains open to date. In an effort to paint a clearer picture of its state, we ventured into the landfill in the company of swim call workers whose identities will remain concealed for their protection. For $222 a day before deductions, these men have worked years in a place most people would dare not spend five minutes. The country, they say, needs to know the truth about what is taking place, or rather, what is not taking place. This, this, they use the word landfill, right? But we don't have landfills in Trinidad. You know what I mean? Not a big one. We have dump sites. You know what I mean? When you have a dump, you just do what you call waste separation. So if you're doing waste separation, then here is a dump. But if you have a place where everything dumped in day and you're covering a day, not a dump, that is you engineering a time bomb. According to the Sanitation District of Los Angeles County, a dump is a site upon which trash is piled on or in, while a landfill is an engineered site that makes use of modern scientific methods to protect the environment and the public's health. In a landfill, the process is simply that trash is sorted and covered, preventing debris from blowing away. Gas created as rubbish breaks down, is collected in pipes and recycled, while materials that are considered dangerous are not allowed at the landfill. According to these workers, none of these steps are taken at the Beetham landfill presently. We have a waste management problem in Trinidad, right, and Tobago. A serious waste management problem that is. And we cannot go about doing things as we did in the 1950s, because certainly we still do. You know what I mean? Just dumping everything. You know what I mean? Nothing is being sorted and separated, you understand? For recycling, everything has been dumped. So it's clear to see that these people in authority, they understand and know these things, but yet still, it's like just lip, lip service to the public. Right now, they're blindfolding all the by telling all the way into recycling and separating plastic. And so all you're feeling that they're doing a proper job. According to a 2010 Waste Management and Centroid study, the country's waste consisted of 233,000 tons of industrial waste, 89,000 tons of plastic, 88,000 tons of organic food waste, 87,000 tons of paper, 75,000 tons of construction waste, and 47,000 tons of glass. Given that there is no separation of the waste that comes into the Bethum, the workers said medical waste, pharmaceutical chemicals, and just about anything someone can dump is present here. This chemical cocktail and the subsequent breaking down of organic waste lead to the formation of very toxic gases. From literature and the fumes from here that's blow there, the toxic waste with them telling you, that don't know nothing, you believe that? A lot of things that come in there are carcinogens in them. They have a lot of radioactive molecules, electrical waste especially. You know, like we sell phones, uh, microwaves, electrical appliances, and so on. It's a hazardous waste here. It has a thing the outlaw, which is asbestos. It's still have people taking down their asbestos and bringing it to right them. So when you stand up there and a truck or flow that asbestos, and the breeze blowing that there in your eyes, or anything, or you inhale that, you damage. According to the New York State Department of Health, landfill gas contains many different gases and varies depending on the different types of waste present at the landfill. However, it states that methane and carbon dioxide typically makes up 90 to 98 percent of a landfill's content. Acting like a blanket insulating the earth, carbon dioxide and methane are the two main greenhouse gases which warm the earth by absorbing energy and slowing the rate at which the energy escapes into space. Carbon dioxide emissions cause increases in atmospheric concentrations of CO2 that will last thousands of years, while methane emissions last about a decade. 
In terms of health effects, these gases displace oxygen in closed areas like office buildings, leading to faster heartbeats, shorter breaths, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and even a lack of coordination. In part three, we examine how the conditions at the Beetham landfill have affected swim call workers and the nearby Karani Swamp. People don't know that. You feel these educated people don't know that these people here risking their life. When I started, they had all my teeth in my mouth. You see these teeth? There's dentures. All my teeth drop out my mouth. I have one lung because I suffer from a respiratory problem because that dust, I, I, I get bronchitis already from this dust. In an EMA 2011 report on the environmental impact of the Beetham landfill, it was acknowledged that fires caused by methane gas are of particular concern. But if you put in cardboard, rubber, Everything plastic, together. Together. acid, so you're mixing chemicals by burying all these waste together. You could get gas. You ever watching Tong and they tell you the dump lighting and they clear out it? It's because the waste that sent out a gas. Yes, there's a urgent need and you would see from time to time these landfills that I mentioned previously, they sometimes, um, there are fires at these landfills. And you would imagine when there are fires at these landfills, uh, many of these landfills are, are in close proximity to human settlement and urban areas. So you will imagine when these landfills are on fire, the smoke uh, would affect the, the, dung, the, the downwind communities. The 2011 EMA report added that air quality testing revealed that nitrogen oxide emissions and sulfur dioxide levels were above that recommended by the United States Environmental Protection Agency. According to the agency, exposure to these can irritate airways in the human respiratory system, aggravating or leading to respiratory illnesses, as well as producing symptoms like coughing, wheezing, or difficulty breathing. Environmental effects can include interacting with water, oxygen, and other chemicals in the atmosphere to form acid rain. With a Beetham landfill located within the Karani Swamp, this takes us to another finding of the EMA's report, highlighting the claim that there is no system in place to protect the surrounding ecosystem from toxic substances released from the landfill. We could just, um, we could make an um, a educated inference that because where the, where the landfill is in relation to the Karani River and the coastal areas, it's, it's not hard to, to uh, imagine that um, leachate and runoff from the landfill will get into the nearby water courses. Um, and if it's not properly treated, um, it can have an impact on the entire environment. In part four, we will take a look at the environmental consequences of a toxic liquid leaking from the landfills called leachate. Joshua Simongal, TV6 News. By now, we are all aware that landfills produce a highly toxic liquid called leachate. This can contain heavy metals, toxic organic pollutants, plant nutrients, and pathogenic microorganisms. So what exactly is leachate? Rainfall, which will percolate down through the material and just pick up a variety of chemicals that's in the material. And that is that, le that liquid that percolates through the material, is, the waste is, is leachate. It contains whatever is in the landfill. So uh, things like a lot of pathogens, a lot of organic ma material. In 2011, EMA reported that groundwater contamination via poorly managed leachate ponds may be adversely affecting the nearby Karani River and Beetham community. You see, when landfills are built, they are supposed to be lined with geologically impermeable materials to prevent leachate from seeping into the ground and underground water sources. However, according to former swim call CEO Ronald Roach, none of the country's landfills have this lining. 
that is something we are very conce much concerned about. Um, as part of our P PSIP submission, we would have requested funds for the installation of a treatment plant um, to deal with that leachate. Um, we requested a uh, sum of 24 million, which is the cost of, of uh, such, a, such a plant. And we only got 1 million in PSIP. So that is one of our major concerns that we don't have the funds to properly address the um, environmental and public health concerns emanating from, from each of our landfill sites. So whilst that was done in Guanapo, we know that Forest Park and Beetham, we have similar problems. While the Guanapo landfill has such ponds to collect leachate, at the Beetham landfill, according to swim call workers, there are none at all. When Sunday's bank, there's garbage. When the rain starts to fall and it soak through the dirt yeah, and it touch the garbage, the gas and the chemical and things starting to run out wrong and go in your water course. It leaking into the sea, really, because yeah. it's in the mango. They killing the mango because the life in the mango die out. It are not going on. The wildlife, it goes, the pelican, all of them gone. You see the trees drying up. Let the camera get that. See all the trees drying up. The waste doing that. The acid from the waste will dry up the organic. A UB-led team published their study called The Impact of the Contaminants Produced by the Guanapo Landfill on the Surrounding Environment in 2016. We spoke to the research lead of that project, UE lecturer and environmental chemist, Professor Denise Beckles. Well, I guess what I would tell them is that overall, the, the water resources in the immediate area of the Guanapo Landfill are contaminated. Um, primarily with metals, is the most important, I guess, of the um, pollutants that we found. The landfill is not the only source of pollution for the nearby water courses. Beckles added that other potential sources of contaminants may include agricultural chemicals and animal products from nearby farms, as well as illegal quarrying and residential construction work. The report's findings stated that underground and overground movement of leachate had the potential to contaminate soils, groundwater, aquifers, food supplies for humans, and irrigation wells, as well as reduce animal and insect diversity. The project did look at a risk assessment of the landfill and environs on both the environment, as, as per se, as well as humans, the people that live in the area. Um, and the idea, the, eventually the conclusion that was made that the risk was fairly high. With respect to the metals, what, as I said, because we found that there were so, such high levels in both the water and the sediments in just about every location, um, there were some, that kind of put us off on the tangent of to how to, um, the likelihood is where was that coming from. Um, a significant amount, no doubt, was coming from the landfill. Human exposure to toxic metals can lead to developmental retardation, several types of cancers, kidney damage, endocrine disruption, immunological and neurological effects, as well as other disorders. Joshua Simongo, TV6 News. In testing four groundwater sources for the presence of heavy metals, three showed worrying concentrations for lead, three for cadmium, three for zinc, while one showed worrying levels for mercury and another for arsenic. All five surface water sources tested showed concentrations of concern or possible concentrations of concern as well. Other major findings included moderate risk characterization but high risk of heavy metal contamination in both agricultural products and aquatic species. Yeah. So that part, would you say it's, it can be labeled an environmental disaster? Mm. Well, based on our results, the, 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 what the area itself is in pretty bad shape. Um, and we, and given that water travels, it moves, it's not still gonna stay in the Guanapo area, it will move. Um, you are running the risk of this traveling to other locations. 
Following the publication of the report, according to Dr. Beckles, an additional leachate retention pond was dug at the Gonapu landfill, while the older ponds were dredged to lower the amount of overflow into the environment. A pilot leachate treatment project was implemented at Gonapu, however, there remains no permanent treatment plant here, or as a matter of fact, at any other landfill. One of the interesting things we found in our study, that Gonapu study, was that the, 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 river, the water pulses themselves tended to have the ability to almost clean themselves once the source is removed. So if we could reduce or remove the source material, you could probably see quite an effective cleaning in a not even that long a period of time. All leachate ponds remain unsealed while leachate is not being actively treated to reduce its environmental impact. Joshua Simongo, TV6 News. Um, the solid waste master plan for the country, which was developed by a consultant team of planning and Stanley Associates. Uh, since then, it called for an integrated solid waste management approach uh, in the country, and, and that has not uh, since materialized. So you would find that there's a repeat in all the strategic plans since then of the need for an integrated waste management system. The problem has always been the lack of funds uh, for such a system. He left the company he, he, because recommendations wasn't being adhered to. You know, he was seen like people wasn't willing to even make an effort to do the right thing for the workers, for the company, for what's yeah. right to be done. They never saw it fit to put the, the funds because waste management does take out of funds and you cannot watch the funds and compare um, funds to the life of people, people life, people health. The fact that they never placed the emphasis on waste management to call, as my comrades say, the billions of dollars that passed through. They could have done the right thing three times, a hundred times already, but they never did it. My word to them is that it's time for me to wake up and know that the government that they have to look into peace. Otherwise, we don't have no children. They have a poison nation, yes. Joe Public had to petition the government to deal with waste now. Have to Not add, no, next no. year and the year after and next when we get money. You can go deal with it right. now. Everybody that. might have to go and live in Tobago. Mm. Given the potential environmental and public health risks attached to waste management practices at the nation's landfills, how long is the country prepared to continue delaying the solid waste master plan? Despite a lack of consistent environmental and public health impact testing at the landfills, it has been acknowledged many times that they are running out of space. It has also been acknowledged that these landfills are sources of toxic contaminants, the true consequences on the environment and nearby communities of which the public remains uncertain. I don't think it's as simple as, well, if we shut down the landfill, all problems will stop. And I don't think any, in any case it's possible. I think what we want is for it to be managed so that the impacts are minimized. Because we will all, we have waste, we have to get rid of it. Um, I think in this instance, we, we need to do something, um, as I said, sooner rather than later. So the whole holistic plan is that it has to get engineered, please. Whether they the plan to make it in Forest Park, and when you're done, make that engineer place, you have to also implement laws to govern ways. We need to focus attention on that so that we, we don't um, overextend these landfills until we find the solution in terms of um, closure of these landfills and have one main engineered landfill. All of the Terrible stuff that comes from the, the land is going into a groundwater system as it is now. Have you impressed upon the line ministry the, the ecological disaster that this could turn out to be for Trinidad and Tobago? I, I, I need to understand that because I have a really good understanding of the, the, the SOXs, the NOX, and then the, the alkalis are particularly bad. I understand quite a bit of this. I, and and I, I would just like to add to that 
um, that it's not just municipal solid waste that 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 is received at those landfill medical sites. Waste. So whilst whilst we would like to believe that it, it's municipal solid waste sites, we do have medical waste, we do have hazardous waste coming in. So it adds to the problem. There's no time to waste. Joshua Simongo, TV6 News.